On this week's episode, I'm going over the top 10 reasons why 3D prints fail on a resin printer. Hey guys, what's going on? Michael here. So on this week's video, I am talking about the 10 things that I wish that I had known about why resin prints fail. So coming in at number 10 on my list, having too many prints on the build plate. So this seems pretty self-evident, but if you overload that build plate with so much, your printer will have a hard time with each individual layer line and you will find that even though you shouldn't get it, you will have several prints on that uh, build plate that fail just simply because the printer's trying to do too much at one time. I have reduced to around two to three miniatures on a build plate and I get much better results because of it. For number nine, your LCD screen may be too dirty to do that print. That's right, keeping that screen clean will give you better results. My best tip for you is to just use a simple glass scraper. Chemicals can damage the screen or the machine and a glass scraper will work wonders for getting those little bits of resin buildup off of that screen. Number eight, keep that print rotated. So prints that are straight up and down with square angles tend to do much worse in printing process on a resin printer than a print that's rotated at a 45 degree angle. That incline means that each individual layer of your print will have a smaller surface area, which means that it will release easier from your FEP film, uh, causing less damage to the FEP film, less strain on the model, and less strain on the supports. You'll get better results, and I highly recommend that you rotate your prints. For number seven, we're talking about our supports. So great supports give great results, and I personally use a separate program called Cheetah Box to do my supports, and then I have the Photon program that came with the printer slice the file for me. Um, if you can keep your supports at a fairly high density for the model, avoid any islands, uh, and um, make sure that your model is uh, properly rotated, you should get excellent results. Coming in at number six, a defective screen ruins prints. So I went through a period of time where I was getting a significant amount of failed prints. They started out really well and then at the end of their print cycle, the last 100, 150 layers would totally fail. And this was because the LCD screen in my printer was going up. The only way that you can really check this regularly is before you start a print, run an exposure test. If you get a square box with no stray lines or pixels, then your screen's doing pretty well. But once you start getting that static effect on your screen when you run that test, it's time to replace your LCD screen and ensure that you don't suffer with failed prints like I did. Coming in at number five, don't use contaminated resin. I know this seems straightforward, but if you have little dried bits of resin mixed into your bottle, or if, say, a errant drop of uh, alcohol uh, from the cleaning process mixed in, it can cause enough contamination to give you issues with your printing process. So make sure that you avoid cross-contamination and you strain your resin after each print. At number four, we're talking about holes in our FEP sheets. So FEP film uh, is a thin material that does wear out and deteriorates over time. Eventually, your first sign of trouble will usually be in the form of a pinhole leak. This can cause you two issues. 
if the hole is big enough that resin seeps out underneath of the FEP sh uh, sheet during the printing process, your UV curing light will harden that into a blob that causes the print to fail above that area. It also will cause that print to not want to release correctly over the hole in that sheet, which can cause undue strain to your supports and lead to failed prints. So inspect your FEP sheets after each print and make sure that you're changing them out if you get holes in them. At number three on our list, a worn out FEP sheet uh, can be just as detrimental as a sheet that has a hole in it. Watch for cloudiness in your FEP film. As the sheet wears out, uh, the clear uh, transparency of the sheet will diminish and diminish until eventually you're left with something that's cloudy and that prints don't want to release easy from. One way to extend the life of your FEP sheet is by using a lubricant, a PTFE lubricant uh, to be exact, to uh, lubricate the first couple of layers of your print, which are usually your raft layers, which are the largest layers in the entire printing process. Uh, this will help extend the life of the sheet, but no matter what, those sheets are going to wear out and you should be prepared to replace it when it's time. At number two, keep your resin vats clean. I can't stress this enough. Um, regular cleaning in between each print will ensure that you get the best possible prints that you can get. If you've not seen my previous video, there'll be a link up in the corner. Uh, I talk about using the Anycubic Wash and Cure to completely submerge your resin vat in isopropyl alcohol and clean it that way. It's a fantastic way to clean those resin vats and trust me when I tell you, you will not be disappointed by uh, doing it. You'll get superior print results every time. And finally, the number one thing I wish that I knew about why prints fail, bed leveling. I know you guys have all heard anybody in this hobby talk about bed leveling, but it is the number one thing that if you understand that process and can get it correct, you will dramatically improve your print results. I personally had early on issues with bed leveling. I just did not get it quite right. And I think that the firmware um, was partially to blame. I don't think that the beds lowered exactly as low as they should have. But since then, the updated firmware and superior bed leveling uh, techniques have, uh, have meant that I have dramatically improved my print results. Uh, if you need help with bed leveling, I do plan on doing a whole video on that in the future, so watch out for that. But in the meantime, as always, if you have any questions, leave them for me in the comments below. Hey, if you like these videos and want to help me keep making them, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button.